Hey everyone, welcome to another Go With The Flow. My name is Robert Fedorik. It is so good to have you here. In this episode, we are going to cover a really basic flow designer concept, which is the creation of sequential tasks rather than tasks that run in parallel. To demonstrate this, I'm imagining a scenario where I want incident tasks added to an incident sequentially. So I've already gone ahead and created a workflow. In this flow, the first thing we're going to do is create a task. That task is gonna have a short description of task A, and we're gonna relate it back to the parent incident. Next, we're gonna ask if task A is in closed skip state, and if so, we are going to create another incident task called task B. Also, when task A is finished, we are going to create task called task C. And once task C is complete, we're gonna put work notes in the original parent incident that says that all of our subtasks are complete. All right, let's give it a test. Hit the test button. We've got an incident already that I wanted to use. And let's run the test. Let's view the test results. And even though the test says it's completed, we can see that there is a lot of stuff that's gone wrong. First of all, it's gone ahead and completed the action of create task A. That's what we expected. It then evaluated the if statement which is not what we expected because we wanted to wait for task A to complete. Then it went ahead and completed the creation of task C. Again, not what we wanted. We wanted to wait for the completion of task A. And then it's gone ahead and updated the incident record, which again, we did not want because we wanted that to wait until task C was done. Now, if we go to the actual incident, we can see that the work note says all incident tasks have been completed. And if we go to the incident tasks tab, we can see that both task A and C are there and task B isn't there because obviously task A wasn't closed, skipped. So what went wrong? So I intentionally planned this workflow to fail so that you could understand the exact thing you gotta pay attention to when you're trying to create sequential tasks. It's a simple but profound checkbox that even I have forgotten about at times. And the checkbox is wait. Wait forces the flow to wait until the task is done before it proceeds to the next node in your workflow. So you'll notice that task A didn't have a wait. That means that as soon as task A was done creating, it then went through the if statement. And because task A was created as an open state, that means that our conditions of task one state having to be closed skipped could not possibly manifest. Therefore, task B couldn't get created. And also, task C could be created because it's not waiting on task A to get done. And then, of course, because task C has no wait, we can go ahead and update the incident record. So because we didn't put waits on each of the tasks that we need to wait for, that means it all happened instantaneously. Okay, so let's get out of this failed flow and go to a flow that actually works. So this is the add incident tasks no wait. We are going to go to the add incident tasks. And let's take an inspection here. Let's go to create task, task A, and we can see that it demands a wait. That means that node two, if task A is skip create task B, can't proceed until task A is finished. Likewise, we're gonna go to task C and we're gonna see that it has a wait as well. And that means that our update incident record action can't possibly work until task C is completed. Let's test this one out. So we're gonna test. I've got a specific incident I want to test this against, run the test, view the execution details. And this test tells us that we're waiting. It means the flow hasn't got to complete. Why isn't it complete? Because it's still waiting on a bunch of stuff. So we can see through the log that task A has run, but it's still waiting. Let's go to the incident and actually see that in action. Here we are on the incident. Let's go down to the incident tasks. And we see this task is here, it's task A and its state is open. Let's take this incident task and put it in a state of close skipped. State, close skipped, save. Now we go back to our flow designer and let's refresh this test flow. So now task A is registered as completed and that means our evaluation could happen. It evaluated as true because task A was set and close skipped and then it's gone ahead and created task B. It's also gone ahead and created task C but task C is waiting. So we're back on our incident. We see both task B and C are still open. Let's go ahead and close those. Close complete, save. Let's go back to our flow and see what's happening. We're gonna refresh and the create task C has been completed and also the update record has been completed. So we should go back to our incident and we now see that all incident tasks completed has been added to the work notes. 
And there you have it, folks. A simple weight switch on the create task action in Flow Designer can mean the difference between a bunch of things running in parallel and a bunch of things running in sequence. <laughs> One thing I didn't get to demonstrate that I also think is super cool is the fact that you can use code to determine whether you're gonna wait or not. You'll notice that when you're looking at this wait field, there is this toggle scripting for wait in which you can use script to determine if the wait is gonna be true or false. So even more nuance and capability there. Hope this one was useful for you and I will see you on the next one. Hi, my name is Robert the Duke Fedoric. I am the ServiceNow Consigliere. I do freelance architecture and development on ServiceNow. I also do recruiting and individual and group coaching. If you need better ServiceNow outcomes, you can reach me at rob at the duke.digital. I can't wait to hear from you.